welcome to massive online course on fluidization engineering uh, sponsored by ministry of human resource development government of india today uh, this course will be uh, discussed on fluidization engineering now what is uh, fluidization the fluidization is a process by which a bed of solid particle is converted from a static solid like state to a dynamic fluid like state by means of flow of gas or liquid. Here see uh, one uh, or two video regarding this fluidization then you will understand what is this fluidization. Here see initially the, uh, the bed is of uh, full of uh, solid particles this is rest without moving whenever any gas or liquid is supplied from the bottom of this column of the solid bed you will see the solid particles will try to lose from its rest position due to this flow of gas or liquid and it will get a fluidized state that means called dynamic fluid like state. Now, in this case uh, another example if we increase the gas or liquid velocity from the bed you will see another different type of uh, fluidization phenomena occurs. In this case gas is coming from the bottom as a dispersed phase of bubbles that means here this white space here you are seeing uh, in the video that this uh, space of white space is uh, nothing but the empty space without solid particle and uh, here the uh, solid particles are uh, entering by this uh, uh, gas bubbles uh, from the bottom to the top and this gas is dispersed as a dispersed phase of bubbles from the bottom of the bed. Whereas, in this case the left uh, video you will see there is no formation of bubble. Why? Because the gas velocity or liquid velocity it is supplied from the bottom of this column in such way that and here a minimum gas velocity or liquid velocity is maintained so that the solid particle just to become fluidized. So, this minimum fluidization state is called minimum fluidization and uh, the velocity at which this minimum fluidization condition is maintained uh, is called incipient velocity or incipient fluidization velocity or minimum fluidization velocity. Beyond this minimum fluidization velocity you will see there are several other different types of pattern of this fluidization will occur. Now, question is that then okay, we are getting this type of fluidization, we will discuss later on also what is the different application of the fluidization system based on this dynamic fluid like state. Now, before coming to that point, we will discuss that okay, this fluidization is nothing but a multi phase system phenomena, multi phase phenomena. What is that multi phase system? Multi phase system means more than one phases will be coming in contact to each other and uh, and governs some processes in chemical and biochemical industries and what is that then multi phase system the you know that phases different phases like gas liquid and solids now combination of these phases forms multi phase system. Now, this uh, suppose gas and liquid the two phases, these two phases, uh, these two phases again this gas and solid again this liquid and solid liquid liquid and gas liquid solid there are different combination of these systems and this different combinations are called the multi phase combination system. Now, this fluidization is uh, one of the multi phase system. Now, fluidization basically occurs in two phase system and three phase systems. In two phase fluidization you see here 
the two phase fluidization means uh, uh, here C two phase fluidization means gas solid combination and liquid solid contain, uh, combination. Here gas is coming in contact with solids and there is an application of gas solid reactions or any other application like uh, adsorption, absorption etcetera. Similarly, liquid and solid, liquid is coming with solid in contact and in three phase fluidization gas, liquid and solids uh, three phases are coming in contact. Now, in case of gas and solids you will see or gas liquid solid the gas or liquid acts as a continuous uh, and solid act as a con discrete uh, medium or you can say the dispersed phase medium. Now, in two phases this gas is a continuous phase and solid as a discrete phase whereas, in the three phase systems the gas and solid both may be as a dispersed phase and liquid as a continuous phase. Even gas will be continuous phase, but liquid and solid will be discrete phases. Now, depending on the application of the process, it will be applied in a three phase fluidization system. Now, if suppose gas is supplied in the liquid medium, and now this gas will be dispersed as a dispersed phase of bubbles. Now, bubbles will be forming through a distributor. Now, the distributor will hold some holes with different sizes based on that size the different sizes of the bubbles will form. We will discuss later on the distribution process of the gas in the fluidized bed. Now, see uh, this gas will be dispersed this dispersed phase of bubbles in that case liquid phase will be continuous where in the liquid solid also will be discretized and this solid and liquid will be forming as a slurry. Now, this solid and liquid medium will be uh, acting as a slurry medium and gas will be dispersed medium. Now, there are different uh, aspects of this uh, application of this gas liquid solid reaction sometimes gas aided uh, slurry reactor may be you will see that uh, uh, fissure trophy synthesis they are uh, in presence of catalyst particles uh, the formation of the carbon monoxide and hydrogen mixture that is uh, uh, this is gas uh, production that is applied in slurry uh, bubble column reactor. So, that is one application of a uh, three phase fluidization system, whereas two phase fluidization like uh, gas and solid they are suppose adsorption of some gas uh, uh, in a solid medium, even uh, adsorption of organic uh, gas uh, into the solid, even adsorption of liquid into the solid also they are even uh, gas is adsorbed on the uh, liquid on liquid and solid. Uh, operation there liquid is adsorbed into the uh, uh, solid. And also there are some other applications slab like granulation coating in that case gas solid operation is very important liquid solid uh, uh, fluidization is very important. And uh, in uh, gas solid operations you will see there is uh, solid will be uh, dispersing in the gas medium in such way that there will be some uniform mixing of the uh, bed. So, that the fluid like behavior uh, of this solid bed will be applied for the different processes. Now, this uh, why does this uh, fluidized solid bed behave like a uh, fluid. Now, you will see any uh, fluid uh, whenever it will behave uh, uh, it will have some uh, properties like it uh, will seek some uh, level. Of course, whenever this fluidized bed uh, 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 will behave like a fluid it uh, will seek its own level like bed height. Even when in this case you will see uh, in the fluidized uh, bed uh, uh, compared to this uh, fluid like behavior if you insert some object with a lower density then a bed density you will see there will be floating of that object or bobbing up and down if uh, pushed downwards in the bed. So, this is one property by which you can say that this fluidized bed solid uh, uh, or solid beds behave like a fluid. Another example of course, these fluidized beds have a static pressure head due to the gravity and uh, levels between two similar fluidized bed uh, equalize their uh, static uh, uh, pressure heads. The hydrostatic pressure which rises with the depth in the bed also as like that suppose any liquid. Uh, of course, the 
fluidized uh, 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 hydrostatic uh, pressure will be uh, depending on the depth of the bed. Now, contacting method you will see there are several ways or modes of contacting of the solid liquid or solid liquid gas in the fluidized, uh, fluidized bed or fluidization operation. Here bash process is there in that case you will see uh, in this case uh, in this case uh, the uh, solid is uh, moving uh, due to the supply of gas the solid will be supplied as a bash wise whereas the co current process or co current um, uh, modes in that case gas and solid both will be supplied uh, uh, in a continuous mode uh, continuous mode and it will be uh, moving in the same direction uh, uh, of the uh, uh, bed and uh, then co current means here uh, uh, both gas and solids will be moving in the same direction and counter current in this case if uh, gas and uh, solids are there uh, uh, the solids will be uh, uh, flowing uh, opposite to the gas uh, flow and uh, if it is a liquid solid then solid will be flowing opposite to the liquid and also in the case of counter current operation uh, you will see uh, for gas liquid uh, solid operation the gas and liquid will be uh, flowing opposite to each other uh, in a base of solid where the solid particles if any catalyst particle or solid particles is, uh, uh, is uh, lighter than the liquid then you will see due to their buoyancy of the solid, uh, um, solid particles will try to move up whereas, uh, uh, liquid will be moving downward. So, in that case the due to the downward movement of the uh, liquid, uh, solid particles will try to move downward against its buoyancy. So, this type of uh, uh, fluidization process is called inverse fluidization cross current another uh, one type of operations like here uh, in this case uh, uh, the gas or liquid will be flowing in the direction um, perpendicular to the uh, movement of the solids or solid is moving uh, cross currently to the direction of the fluid or gases. Now, we will see there are different patterns based on the uh, gas velocity or liquid velocity that is supplied to the fluidized bed you will see some are bash operated, some are transport operated. Now, bash operated systems are like fixed bed, bubbling bed, churn turbulent bed. Fixed bed means here it is not as that of uh, that fluidization condition, but you will see if just simply uh, this fluidization operation is maintained at a minimum gas velocity, the solid will be uh, uh, fluidizing uh, from its rest uh, just uh, uh, from its rest at a minimum fluidization uh, condition. So, that minimum fluidization condition whenever uh, fluidized bed is operated is it is called uh, particulate uh, fluidized bed or it is called homogeneous fluidization condition. And you will see if you gradually increase the gas velocity or liquid velocity uh, here see if you increase this gas, uh, gas or liquid velocity, the fluidized bed is operated under bubbling condition. From uh, at that condition, the gas will be uh, uh, flowing from the bottom of the column through the distributed as a dispersed phase of bubbles. Uh, so, this type of phenomena is called bubbling fluidization. Okay. And another is called if you increase again the gas velocity and if it is the narrow fluidized bed, then what will happen the gas uh, will be dispersed dispersed through bubbles, but size of the gas will be something different uh, 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 than uh, previous one. If the size of the bubbles is uh, uh, almost uh, near about the uh, diameter of the uh, column of this fluidized bed, then uh, uh, you will see that type of uh, condition is called slugging fluidization. This slugging may be axial and flat. You will see sometimes the bubble which is uh, bigger in size and almost equal to size of its uh, diameter, then uh, it will go uh, 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 vertically 
uh, in a chain wise. So, this type of it is called axial uh, uh, fluidization. And uh, if uh, the size of these bubbles, the size of these bubbles is uh, flatter, like if uh, if the gas uh, bubble size occupy or gas bubble is occupied uh, whole cross sectional area of the bed, then it will move up uh, just occupying the whole cross sectional area. And this type of uh, slugging is called flat slugging. Even if you increase more gas velocity there uh, in the bed, then you will see there will be a uh, intermixing of the gas and solid in such a way that there will be a formation of churn inside the bed. So, this type of uh, bed operation or pattern of this fluidization is called churn turbulent uh, pattern of the fluidization. And here this is the churn turbulent fluidization. Even if you increase the uh, size of the uh, increase the uh, velocity, uh, you will see there will be first fluidization. In this case, the settling velocity of the solids, if they are suppose any velo uh, settling velocity is there V t, then 20 times higher than if it is there uh, this gas velocity, then you will see first fluidization occurs. Even if you increase more than 20 times of the settling velocity of the uh, uh, solid particles, you will get pneumatic transport type of uh, 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 fluidization operation. This first, first fluidization and pneumatic transport fluidization, you will see there will be no formation of individual shape of bubbles, but there will be a discontinuous shape of bubbles and there will be sometimes you will see the continuous gas phase will be uh, occurring inside the bed. And uh, also the porosity of the solid particles inside the bed will be higher in case of pneumatic transport. But here this dilute medium, medium of the bed of pneumatic transport will uh, be having in, uh, in the process. Now see what are the basic elements of fluidized bed. Of course, uh, uh, you should know that uh, if suppose any fluidization operation occurs in a bed, it is called fluidization, uh, fluidized bed. That means, the bed where the fluidization process takes place. Now, in that fluidization uh, 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 fluidized bed, you will see some components of this fluidized bed will be having basic components. You can say there will be having some one distributor through his gas will be distributed and uh, what is that internal heating or cooling system will be uh, there, because uh, for some operations you will see the medium to be of course, controlled at a certain temperature and um, um, uh, pressure. So, that is certain temperature to be maintained and that temperature to control of course, it will be uh, uh, heating at a certain temperature. And also uh, uh, this heating uh, of this medium to be controlled by externally uh, uh, heating. So, there are two provisions that heating conditions that internal and external uh, provision of the heating. And also, this solids whenever it will be loaded in, into the uh, solid bed, you will see there will be a, uh, a provision to supply this solids into the bed. So, this is your solid uh, feeds uh, provision and there will be a feeder of the solids. And another, uh, if you want to uh, uh, supply the feed at liquid feed inside the bed, there will be some distributor of liquid inside the uh, uh, bed by which you can uh, in you can uh, uh, supply the liquid into the bed. And there are uh, some other this is called this part is called shell this shell part and inside this shell this uh, fluidization occurs this is called totally fluidized bed. And another uh, one important uh, component is called cyclones. So, these cyclones are being used because uh, uh, if solid particles is coming uh, up uh, through the gas, uh, there are generally fine particles whose uh, size is very uh, fine, then uh, small, uh, then it will be coming out uh, 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 by this uh, gas. And uh, of course, these fine particles to be separated, uh, separated. Now, this cyclone separator is being used to separate these solid particles. And these cyclone separators are used internally sometimes or maybe externally, but some sometimes 
this both externally and internally uh, cyclone separators are being installed uh, because of more uh, separation of the finer particles uh, there. And then after separation these solid particles again uh, will be reused or uh, in, in the bed. And then what is that uh, another component is blower of course, by which gas will be supplied and uh, before uh, going to that rice bed this gas will be maintained certain uh, temperature uh, uh, and that maintaining temperature of course, on heat exchanger to be used for uh, heating this uh, gas medium. And extra uh, that is the solid optics of course, there will be some provisions by which the solid particles to be given up uh, taken off from this uh, bed uh, for reuse or uh, maybe refreshment or uh, uh, or uh, uh, maybe which are not being used for that uh, after reuse. Maybe if uh, it is combustion, then solid particles which are not being again used, it would be uh, taken off from the bed. So that is why solids uptake option of course will be there. Now gas is distributed from the bottom through the distributor. There are several uh, 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 different kinds of uh, distributor. Of course, you will have we will be discussing later on the distributor uh, part the gas or liquid with a minimum velocity uh, uh, which pass through the bed via the empty space between the particles will uh, cause the minimum fluidization. So, these are the basic elements of fluidized uh, bed. Uh, uh, so, there are uh, operations of course, there are some other accessories of course, uh, that depending on the um, operation um, and that is uh, installation and also design of the fluidized bed that depends on. Now, what are the different layouts of the fluidized bed? Basic layouts you will see sometimes some fluidized bed will be circulating fluidized bed. The circulating fluidized bed sometimes it is being used after fluidization uh, if the solid particles will be reused or recycled. So, that is why it is called circulating fluidized bed. Some fluidized bed will be internally recycling um, after separation of the solid particles by uh, um, uh, cyclone separators and uh, it will be used as a turbulent fluidized bed. There are high uh, rigorous uh, 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 fluidization uh, due to the high velocity of the solid or liquid inside the bed it will be maintained. So, that turbulency will occur there in uh, intense mixing of the solid and gas will be there inside the bed that of course, will be used for specific uh, application. Now, laterally staged bed also it is uh, one uh, that is pattern or layouts you can say in this case here in this direction solids are being uh, uh, supplied and loaded and after drying it will be coming out. So, laterally it is actually uh, supplied the solid particles are laterally moving um, compared to that what is that uh, uh, gas and liquid. And also vertically staged bed also it is uh, one important layout here in this case uh, solid particles will be loading from the top of the bed and uh, um, uh, gas will be uh, supplied from the bottom of the bed and it will be stage wise it will be uh, supplied. Uh, and also there are other provisions like twin type bed and also floating uh, uh, fluidized bed even uh, in the fluidized bed you will see uh, whenever solid particles will be recycling that will down comer will be used and also uh, uh, when it will be fluidized it will be called a riser in the riser of course, the solid particles will be fluidizing. Now, question is that uh, what are the advantage of this fluidization? There are so many things regarding that there are some applications of course, will be there, but what are the advantages? You will see this uh, if you uh, apply the solid uh, 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 liquid operation or solid gas operations or gas liquid solid operations for specific chemical processes and like uh, drying process drying processes. Now, solid will be drying. Uh, uh, in a fluidized bed. Uh, so, in that case ease handling of the solid particles and also there will be good mixing uh, of the solid particles during this operation and also continuous operation you can do in a fluidized bed. Uh, otherwise, in the conventional way like in the atmosphere open sources open just uh, uh, field if suppose bed is uh, kept for drying then uh, uh, it will be best wise that you cannot continuously doing this operation. But in a fluidized bed they due to the uh, higher mixing of the solid particles you will see for a certain temperature if you dry it immediately you can get the dried solid particles there. 
So, they are it is possible for continuous operation even for some other chemical operations it is seen that there will be higher mass transfer coefficient and also uh, there will be a, a distribution of heat for that because of uh, intermixing of the solid particles with the uh, fluids then uh, it will give the higher uh, heat transfer coefficient. It is also good for exothermic reactions and also you will see there are more contact efficiency, more contact residence time also um, uh, uh, inside the bed. So, these are the advantages even for large scale operation you can do uh, any chemical or biochemical industry uh, or any physical operations uh, in large scale operation pilot plant scale operations you can do by this fluidized bed. But of course, every system uh, 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 though it has some advantages there will be some disadvantage also. What are those disadvantages? Disadvantages like sometimes it is difficult to get the plug flow operations. This plug flow, oper plug flow operations is actually suitable for uh, higher yield for chemical processes. So, in that case the fluidized bed sometimes there will be back mixing. So, non ideal uh, flow even plug flow phenomena will not be actually uh, feasible in this uh, uh, fluidized bed operations. Of course, there are several provisions are made to get it plug flow because some backfill or some other provisions are made so that the plug flow operations can be possible in the fluidized bed. Some other designs like of course, initial capital cost is so high to design this fluidized bed. And uh, sometimes back mixing also is a uh, very uh, crucial factor whenever it is fluidized some solid particles whenever it will be going up and uh, uh, it will uh, of course, uh, go down due to its uh, uh, weight uh, and some of course, segregation of this uh, higher uh, uh, um, uh, solid particles uh, coarser solid particles it will be moving down even not only that any the size of this particles it will be moving inside the bed in a circular motion. So, there will be some back mixing when you will not get the plug mixing there. So, back mixing is sometimes is uh, not actually uh, uh, suggested for getting the uh, uh, intensified uh, uh, yield of the uh, processes. So, back mixing sometimes hinder the yield of the process. Entering problem also entrainment sometimes some fine particles will clog this some uh, 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 what is that uh, uh, devices like cyclone separators even uh, uh, the distributor of the uh, uh, gas uh, uh, in the fluidized bed. So, this type of problem may be pos uh, uh, may be uh, problematic in uh, the fluidized bed operation. Of course, the fine particles is coming out uh, uh, because of its uh, uh, low buoyancy and low size and uh, uh, this entrainment of the solid particles of course, the, uh, 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 hinder the process efficiency. Size problem, of course, there will be uh, you have to make the you have to design this uh, uh, fluidized bed in a uh, bigger uh, size uh, sometimes for uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, it is not it is not suitable for some specific applications if you are making it large um, uh, way there will be some uh, you know static zone, there will be some dynamic zone, there will be mixing and not mixing properly, there are huge cost. So, there will be some problem in that case. Complex hydrodynamics of course, you will see you cannot predict that hydrodynamics precisely they are inside the bed what is happening there. You will see there will be sometimes solid liquid interactions, liquid liquid interactions. If there is any bubble is forming inside the bed bubbling fluidized bed then bubble bubble interactions some you cannot uh, uh, predict that bubble size accurately what is going on even in dynamic way it is very difficult to. Uh, predict, but still we are uh, scientists or academic persons they are developing different models for that. Even some other what is the uh, 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 intermixing criteria uh, or attrition how it will be happening, how it will be minimized and what are the other heat transfer mass transfer coefficient that will be related to this hydrodynamic aspect, what is the different flow regimes, how we can um, uh, um, uh, uh, regulate this flow regime. Uh, like a particulate to bubble uh, bubbling fluidized bed, uh, it is very difficult to get that uh, uniform flow pattern inside the bed. And also erosion of course, is important the high velocity or fast fluidization of uh, the coarser particles is trying to 
uh, break into smaller particles and again it will be entrained and it will be coming out from the top of the bed. So, there will be a loss of fine particles. Um, of course, there is a uh, 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 high costly uh, catalyst particle it is uh, broken down then it will be very problematic in this. So, these are the disadvantage uh, we can say we can summarize here some difficulty in plug flow, capital cost, back mixing, entrainment problem, size problem, complex of hydrodynamics inside the bed, erosion problem is there, sudden pressure loss of course, there during the operation okay, uh, because of sudden uh, 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 that means interaction of the uh, uh, bubble or any other fluid fluid particles inside the bed, there will be sudden fluctuation, sudden pressure loss inside the bed which will be the uh, 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 create a problem inside the bed for its operation. Now, of course, uh, it is uh, advisable to uh, uh, tell some historical perspectives. Now, all the operations in fluidized bed uh, has categorized into three cycles like uh, first cycle, second cycle and th third cycle. In first cycle actually generally around 1970 to 75 what happens? are regarding this fluidization phenomena. So, there are different investigators they have reported uh, different uh, uh, investigations based on their experimental work and uh, um, uh, different of course, information that uh, can get here. Now, first cycle like 1970 to 75 it informs the phenomenology of the uh, uh, fluidization even for 1975 to 1995 to 2000s you can say. Uh, some other phenomenology of the fluidization. Even uh, after that 2000s, uh, the phenomenology in different way in the fluidization operation are reported by various investigators. Now, in this case 1970 around 1970 to 75, you will see first development is the structural two phase models of this fluidization operation. And then going on and then there are other several uh, important um, investigations like what will be the hydrodynamics of the bubbling fluidized bed, what are the models, how it can be modeled and uh, what are the size of the bubbles and based on the size distribution how these bubble bubble interactions inside the bed, how these bubble bubble interactions actually will uh, 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 affect the process uh, of the uh, uh, process in fluidization. And also, uh, 1975 onward uh, to 1995 and 2000s, you will see there are uh, several things actually uh, which are very important like uh, what are solids actually that are being used, uh, whether the size will be, uh, what will be the size of that particles. Uh, so, what should be the classification of the pipe, whether it is coarser, whether it should be a very fine particles to be used. So, Gildard actually uh, he actually classified these solid particles in different way uh, like A, B, C, D different types of uh, uh, classifications of the uh, solid particles. So, classification even then what would be the diameter effect of the solid particles, even first fluidization whether this coarser particles to be used or not, even uh, if we use the finer particles whether this agglomeration will happen or not that also has been in, uh, reported in different investigators uh, in different way. Now, it will be discussed uh, one by one uh, later on also this classification of the powder, how this uh, powder classification will affect this different flow pattern of the fluidization it will be discussed later on. And then structural of course, there are different uh, type of uh, uh, you know that uh, fluidized bed and also the different shape of the particles how it will be affect on that. Uh, process it of course, it is important even if there are any hydrodynamics like is there any uh, 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 fluctuation of the pressure, heat transfer operation, mass transfer operations, what will be the effect of fluctuation of the pressure and how this fluctuation of the pressure will enhance this or if it is decreased or in the first fluidization how it will affect the uh, process yield that is or efficiency of the uh, fluidized bit will be discussed later on and also it is reported in the literature. Now, essential of full phase diagram of the of course, uh, this uh, uh, simulation of the fluidized bit. So, full phase uh, diagram even what of the flow pattern that have been discussed in 1975 to 2000s. 
and 2000s onward there are several other different phenomena of the fluidization has been reported. Now, this uh, meso scale suspension structure issue also it has been uh, reported uh, in the fluidization operation. Multi solids and particle size distribution what will be the effect on that particle size distribution for the modeling of the uh, fluidized bed. Even surging and discharging issue is there any effect of surging and discharging issue whenever uh, applied it for, for a particular process whether it will uh, effect on the performance of the reactor or not. Even particle particle interaction um, issue is very important if one particle is interacting to another particle whether this adsorption or any other mass transfer operation will affect or not that also been reported. Uh, even gas phase mixing and reduction time, retention time is very important of course, any uh, process uh, uh, yield depends on the mixing of the phases more mixing or back mixing sometimes uh, 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 retard this process and also uh, back mixing also not suitable some operations, but sometimes mixing is very important back mixing also very important suppose for uniform distribution of the uh, heat inside the bed you know, back mixing is very important. Okay. And also uh, retention time of course, this adsorption suppose this adsorption retention time is very important how long this solid particles will be inside the bed that, uh, that, that, that will affect the, the performance of the, the reactor. Let us come to that what are the different application of the fluidized bed. Different applications of the fluidized bed if you see that we are getting the different like solid liquid, liquid solid, gas liquid solid there are several applications. If we, if we categorized these things as solid catalyzed gas phase reactions you can see in, uh, is uh, done in fluidized bed like fluid catalytic cracking, reforming operations, fissure process synthesis like this and uh, what is the thallic and malic and hydride uh, formation or uh, um, production in the fluidized bed, acrylonitrile and aniline production in the fluidized bed, chlorination and uh, bromination of the hydrocarbons in the fluidized bed, polyethylene and polypropylene production in the fluidized bed, even oxidation of sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide inside the bed it is uh, being done in the fluidized bed. Some other operations, some other applications you can say gas solid reactions like ro roasting of uh, uh, ores like zinc sulphide, copper sulphide, nickel sulphides all are roasting from the ores and uh, different products of that uh, uh, ores uh, are coming after fluidization. Combustion and incineration coal combustion it will give the different gaseous products from the coal. Incineration of the solid waste this will give you the different uh, 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 products by fluidization, gasification, coking, pyrolysis, carboni carbonization, calcination, limestone, phosphates, aluminum hydroxide all are being calcined in a, uh, uh, a fluidized bed. Fluorination of uranium oxide uh, is very important in uh, uh, atomic energy section that, uh, um, uh, in, uh, that is done in fluidization, fluidized bed. Fluid coking is very important which is being done in fluidized bed, reduction of iron oxide which is being done in fluidized bed. Even catalyst, catalyst regeneration is very important which are also being by which is being done by fluidization uh, operation. Commercial applications you will see other commercial applications like gas phase non catalytic reactions like natural, natural gas combustion is very important which is being done in fluidization phenomena. Gas liquid solid now fluid bed catalytic cracking, hydro treating, hydro processing, biochemical processes, cultivation of microorganism all of these biochemical applications are being done in fluidization, fluidized bed. Even hydro treating, hydro processing these are being feasible to do in a fluidization, uh, uh, fluidization pro in fluidized bed. Come other operation like physical processes drying of particles, coating of surfaces, granulation, heat treatment, medical beds, filtration, blending, classification, particle classification that is being done in a fluidized bed. These are all physical operations like drying of particles in a fluidized bed, coating of the surface like uh, uh, coating of the tablets in pharmaceutical industries, even uh, 
you know that heat treatment of uh, uh, by fluidization operation blending these are the uh, some applications physical applications which are being done in uh, fluidized bed. Now, some key terminology of course, you have to know uh, some key terminology uh, like attrition what is that attrition? Attrition is nothing but the breakdown of particles actually whenever at high velocity solids being uh, fluidized in the bed you will see there will be a uh, breaking of solid particles. This breakdown of the solid particles are called attritions. Then choking, what is the choking? Choking means now collapse of dilute phase suspension in fluidized bed into a dense phase flow as the gas velocity is reduced at constant solid flow. So, if the gas velocity is reduced at constant solid flow, you will see sometimes this dilute phase will be collapsing in a dense phase. So, this type of uh, phenomena is called choking. Circulating fluidized bed, what is that circulating fluidized bed? The circulating fluidized bed is nothing but is the uh, uh, when uh, uh, the solid particles are being sent around in a loop continuously with no upper interface within the bed. That means, the solid particles are recycled to the bed. Okay. So, the configuration will be done in such a way that, that configuration intended to send particles around in a loop continuously with no upper interface within the bed. So, this type of is called circulating fluidized bed. And then what is the downer? Down is one important terms that this is one type of column where the particles are made to fall through under gravity usually with, with co current gas flow. Distributor or grid, this is very important crucial one design aspect that the gas or liquid which are being supplied from the bottom of the bed of course, uh, 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 it will be a distributor. Now, this distributor of course, it will be a some support plate at bottom which introduce the gas to the bottom of the bed and supports the weight of the bed when it is shut down. Now, this distributor of course, consist of, consist of holes. Now, these holes will decide uh, what will be the size of the bubbles will be formed inside the fluidized bed. So, it depending on the size of the bubbles and it will be designed in such way different type of distributor are being used in, in the bed. What is that allotriation? This allotriation is nothing but a tendency for the fine particles to be preferentially entrained from the reactor, entrained from the reactor. What is first fluidization? This is one term so first fluidization, this is one type of flow design of the fluidized bed, whereby there is a relatively dense suspension, but no distinct upper surface and a superficial velocity generally at least 3 meter per second are being actually maintained. So, that you can get the first fluidization. Of course, we learn that different onset of the uh, uh, pattern of the fluidization later on. What is fines? Fines one of fines is generally particles smaller than 37 micrometer in diameter that is smallest regular sheaf size. What is freeboard? You will see in the fluidized bed one region is extending from top of bed surface to the top of reactor vessel. So, this is the region extended from bed that is from, from some location of the bed to the top this is a freeboard where the very dilution of the solid particles or bed uh, will be there. Interstitial gas, what is that interstitial gas? Gas between the particles, gas between the particles in the dense suspension, it is called interstitial gas. That is how much volume of gas is occupying between the particles in whenever uh, uh, bed is in operation. So, interstitial gas and what is porosity? Porosity is nothing but the what will be the volume fraction of the gas in the bed okay, in a given region as a whole or only inside the particles sometimes used interchangeably with the voids. So, this is porosity what is the fraction of gas in the bed 
or given region as a whole or only inside the particles. What is riser? Riser that is also one type of column, this is the fluidized column uh, where the particles are carried upwards by the gas with no with no uh, uh, making any distinction bed surface. Segregation, what is that segregation? Segregation is uh, nothing but the separation of the solid particles from its size like tendency for particles to gather in different zones according to their size or you can say density. Solids, what is used for actually synonymously you can say with particles. Uh, uh, this is this terms is being used in uh, fluidized bed. And superficial velocity of course, this is very important whenever you are going to uh, uh, correlate uh, with various uh, variables of course, you have to consider the superficial velocity. What is that superficial velocity? This is the gas flow rate divided by the column cross sectional area. Of course, this is empty cross sectional area, there is nothing inside the column that you have to consider. So, this is the superficial velocity and then what is this transport disengagement zone? Transport disengagement zone is the region in the free board beginning at bed surface in which particle flux decreases with height and above which the entrainment is independent of height. So, this is one important that is depending uh, that that is being used this term is being used for entrainment purpose and void is or void fraction what is that fraction by volume of suspension or bed which is occupied by the fluid. Now, okay, we have learnt lot of things about that what is this fluidization, uh, what is the fluidized bed, what are the different pattern of the fluidization and uh, what are the advantages, what are the disadvantages of the fluidized bed and uh, 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 what are the different terminologies, what are the uh, different uh, layouts, all these things we have started. Now, what is actually to learn in this fluidization engineering course? Of course, you have to know something more about this fluidization, what is that? You have to know the design, proper design of efficient fluidization uh, system. Uh, uh, so, of course, for uh, designing of efficient fluidized bed, you have to know some hydrodynamics. What is that hydrodynamics? Hydrodynamics means fundamentally you can say that what is the particle classification which is being actually uh, 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 taking part in a role uh, for, uh, or, uh, for uh, uh, enhancing or just uh, uh, changing the uh, design parameters minimum fluidization condition what is that and uh, how does it depends on different uh, uh, operating variables. Now, what would be the flow regime? So, whether this flow regime depending on the other different factors or not, what is the distribution mechanism of phases, what is the entrainment characteristics, what is the phase interactions, what is the size distribution of the particles, what is the mixing of the phases inside the bed, what is the attrition that you have to know. What is magnetic and what is this? Is there any acoustic field effect on the particle size in the bed? Of course, you have to know, and also what is the scale up issues, all these things uh, you have to know. And other thing is that, except this hydrodynamics, some other transport processes, of course, you have to know, like what is the heat transfer characteristics inside the bed, what is the mass transfer characteristics inside the bed, and uh, what is that, uh, um, uh, how uh, this fluidized bed can be modeled or simulated. Uh, 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 based on this hydrodynamic and transport phenomena uh, of this fluidized bed. Now, see this is one uh, performance uh, sheet you can say uh, that performance of the um, uh, reactor, what are the different factors that uh, uh, affect uh, the performance of the fluidized bed. Now, you will see uh, like some uh, variables like design variables, like operating variables, like physico chemical and uh, uh, thermodynamic uh, uh, properties that will affect on the uh, performance of the fluidized bed. Now, uh, of course, along with this uh, uh, variables uh, of course, this fluidized bed uh, 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 the dynamics of the fluidized bed and the transport phenomena of course, uh, 
it is uh, very important to study and know. And then uh, there's design variables like a spot jar design, reactor geometry, what will be the reactor geometry, reactor internals, uh, catalyst activity, size and concentration, heat transfer duty and others. What are the other operating variables like gas flow rate, liquid flow rate, gas and liquid recycle rate, what are the uh, feed temperature and composition, what is the catalyst renewal rate, what is the pressure and other several um, uh, variables that will be included. And different uh, variables of course, effect on different fluid dynamics and transport uh, characteristics inside the bag. Like see here bubble formation, growth coalescence, removal of bubble, size distribution, even gas hold up, hold up distribution, liquid recirculation phenomena, even liquid turbulence and back mixing is there or not, even you will see catalyst recirculation, agglomeration, all these phenomena, even liquid solid mass transfer, flow region, all these phenomena depends on the factors like design variables and operating variables. Of course, it depends on the spot jar design, reactor geometry, even gas flow rate, liquid flow rate, size of the particles, type of the particles, even pressure, frictional pressure, what is the friction, frictional pressure, all these important variables that uh, affect on these um, uh, characteristics. Now, uh, if you can consider the reactor performance, you have to of course, consider these uh, fluid dynamics and transport phenomena and also kinetics of this uh, fluidized bed. So, uh, all the kinetics, transport phenomena, fluid dynamics depending on basically uh, uh, variables like geometric variables, what is the size of the bed, what is the size of the particles, what is the uh, size of the uh, uh, column and uh, what is the length, what is the breadth, if it is two dimensional, if it is cylindrical, what is the diameter and, uh, and also you can say uh, the is there any internals are being used like <coughs> any baffles for internals uh, to uh, reduce the mixing, is there any uh, provisions are being used or not and what is the size of that provisions, okay, that size also dip, uh, will affect on the uh, hydrodynamics and transport characteristics of the fluidized bed. Even uh, what is that uh, 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 operating variables like or dynamic variables, you can say gas flow rate, liquid flow rates, even uh, uh, gas and liquid recirculation rate, uh, this uh, will affect on the hydrodynamics and transport characteristics. Even other thermodynamic variables like what is that pressure, temperature, that will also uh, change the uh, hydrodynamic characteristics of the fluidized bed. So, thank you uh, for this class. Next class will be discussed uh, with some other topics.